What's up guys, Time itself here, taking a look at a close game of Domination on Bootleg. When Modern Warfare 3 first came out, I did a rather detailed video on the spawn trap on Bootleg, but I figure at this point everyone's fairly familiar with it. So what we're going to take a look at in this game is controlling the spawns when you can't get a reliable spawn trap on. Now we already know about the two major spawn points where each team spawns in, both by Alpha and Charlie, but there are also two major spawn points on either top corner of the map, opposite sides of Bravo. And the east spawn point, the northeast spawn point, is a very popular one, and when things get hectic, that's where the game is most likely to spawn people. But before we get more into spawns, and say that we don't do a great job pushing up the start here, and despite some tack ends and an early rush, they bring four guys, we bring three, and they have better cover, and we're unable to get it, and they take the early lead with Alpha and Bravo. We often talk about giving a team a flag, but as much as anything, it's giving them a spawn point. God, it's scary seeing that C4 fly through the air with Sitrip. And giving them a spawn point doesn't always mean giving them a flag, but it usually does. So here it's fairly obvious which spawn point goes with Charlie, which spawn point goes with Alpha, and then the two up by Bravo kind of contest everything else. And it's going to be hard to take B unless you can get both of those spawn points under control. What do I mean under control? Well, at the very least, not having enemies spawn in on them. Or think about it like this. The longer it takes them to get reinforcements to the areas they want to attack, or places they need to defend, the better it's going to be for us. <laughs> the reverse is true for ourselves. We want to get our spawn point to be somewhere close to both where we want to attack and defend. You see right now, they're spawning up in the northeast corner between Bravo and Charlie. So we're having a hard time pushing Bravo and defending Charlie because we're spawning right next to each other. Or instead, we're going to do the smart thing and go take Alpha, and we're going to split this. And that's one of the reasons I have tack ends for this map, because I know it's possible we're gonna need to split Alpha and Charlie and we could all end up spawning in on the same flag and then they could easily push it. In this case it'd be pretty easy to lose Charlie if I wasn't tacked in up here. Once we have Alpha and Charlie then we can well we don't really know where they're gonna spawn except in one of those two corners by Bravo and we're gonna eventually hopefully take B but at the same time we have to give up one of the other spawns and also prevent them from spawning in at one of those spawn points near Charlie. A nice C4. Now, we did manage to take B in that chaos, but because they're still spawning in next to it, they wipe us, and we spawn back, we can't get reinforcements there, and they retake B from us. And we're also going to lose Alpha in this changeover. Now, because it's freaking bizarre, but we're hoping that they end up spawning next to Alpha now, and not in one of those two B spawn points, but... Well, it doesn't look like we got what we wanted. They're probably still spawning in in that northwest corner. And while this is a little easier to approach as a way to take B when they're spawning there instead of in the northeast corner, it's still not very pleasant. You see, the spawns jumping all over the map, and this is why I have tack ins here, because I want to stay here in the middle where I can get to Bravo and Charlie quickly, and hopefully we'll eventually lock them into that bra in that ch alpha spawn trap, and we can hold things for a while. And I'm looking at the gold explosives everywhere. <laughs> want to defend B because they're spawning in in that northwest corner still, and so they're able to get reinforcements right onto Bravo, and it's really difficult. You see, we're all pushing B, we're all pushing B, and C is completely vulnerable. Vulnerable. This is this is the madhouse of uh, an aggressive domination game in pubs, and we do hold them in the alpha spawn trap for just a little bit here. Uh, things get messy with the EMPs. I should have called mine in as soon as I earned it, and I didn't. And it becomes very hard to know how to hold the spawn trap when you're EMP'd. And you see, I went quick draw for faster tack ends and faster aim down sides times, and faster C4 throwing. <laughs> yeah. But it also means that I don't have Assassin, and when they do get that EMP off, I don't have the use of my radar. And it's not as much that I can't see where they are, it's that I can't see where my teammates are. And because I can't see my teammates, I don't know where I need to go. So even though I'm going to try and keep tacking in here and watch for that C point to start blinking, I don't need to know if, know if I need to fall back and defend Charlie, or try to push up and lock down the spawn trap. I know I've talked about it a lot before, but in close games between competent teams, you're going to see a lot of EMPs. And as much as I would like to switch to an Assassin class, I need to keep the point streaks that I have earned already, which means sticking with the same class I started the game with, which is Quick Draw. So I just keep running around, trying to guess where my teammates are, listen to the callouts, and try to do my job defending and hold them in that spawn trap. But if they get, get either of those B spawns again, things are going to get really rough trying to defend here again. 
You'll see when I switch the overhead that they got the northwest spawn there. And that means they're going to take B. And even though I'm tacked in in the middle of the map, we're not going to be able to stop that unless we have lots of people right there on top of it. And so that EMP they got, well, that really helped them out. They had to keep pushing for it. But uh, just a few of us without knowing where our teammates are, life gets really difficult really fast. And, of course, they're also pushing Charlie. So it's... Where are we going to spawn? Well, we should be spawning in the northeast corner. We should have a chance to defend B, but they are there in force, and we can't stop them. Though most of you already know this, but what's the easiest way to keep people from spawning in, enemies from spawning in at a spawn point? It's to look at it. Because as crazy as people say the spawns are, try to avoid one explosive, get hit by another. <laughs> as crazy as people say the spawns are, uh, there's a general rule that if you're looking at it, they won't spawn there. So, yeah. <laughs> you either look at the spawn point yourself for a couple seconds, and that'll keep enemies from spawning in there, or on the other side, if you want teammates to spawn there, you have to get the enemies out of the area. So, yeah, as much as anything, as we're trying to take this point, it might help us to have someone go up into that northeast spawn corner and keep enemies from spawning in there while we try to take it. Now, who knows where that would mean they would spawn. Uh, it could be better, it could be worse for us. You know, if they spawn on the northwest side and just throw grenades over the white truck, <laughs> it's not going to help a whole lot. So this is why it really helps to try to have a coordinated team with a plan, knowing where you want to push the enemies to, knowing which point, spawn points you want to deny them, and which ones you want for your team. So as often happens, after we dominated, well, the spawns got all crazy, and we lost control, and we lost both B, and now we're going to lose Alpha again. And so we get into this again. We needed to have them spawning somewhere we were ready for. We needed to keep them there so that we could control the two points that we wanted, and they couldn't get reinforcements to want the points we did want to keep. Help on B. That was Real Link, who just called out that he wanted help on Bravo, so I hop on it to give a hand. But they've actually already died, and two of my teammates are pushing to Alpha already. And that means they're going to keep spawning in around Bravo on either of those two northern corners. And it's going to be really, really hard to take B while I have teammates who are pushed on to A. And so this is where the whole communication thing, yeah, really important. Because I was UAV jammed there, I couldn't tell where my teammates were. I just had to trust them that they were pushing B. But actually, I was there alone, and yeah, that was... Oh my god. Uh, not the best use of attack in there, huh? But eventually we go back to just splitting them, mostly because getting control of both spawn points around B is simply proving too hard. And so again, we go back to splitting them, having A and C for quite a while, and manage to work up a pretty good lead. Again, with close names and domination with competent teams, you're going to see lots of EMPs, and so it's just a struggle to try and keep them up, uh, otherwise you're going to find yourself EMP'd. So eventually, we do manage to take Bravo back here. And in the end, I'm not sure it was the right choice, because we had been holding Alpha and Charlie fairly successfully. But, okay, this is why the Stealth Bomber makes sense in support. It's not for killing people, it's for denying spawns. So watch what happens here to get us Bravo. Call in the EMP to cover the Stealth Bomber, and you'll see we all have this control up to the B Street. I'm going to call it in right on the B Street. I'm only going to get one kill for that, but it's going to push them back so that we can get line of sight on most of the spawn points that are over by Bravo. That's going to flip a few of them over to Alpha, where they're going to start taking it. You see, they have it pushed up. They're disorganized. I get behind them with the silenced MP7 and pick up a few kills, and we make this heroic push onto Bravo. Unfortunately, they're spawning at A, and also in that northeast corner, and they're able to come back and push Bravo and push Charlie. And so we almost completely reverse the situation in a matter of seconds. Because in that massive push to Bravo, they were able to get up and get a guy on Charlie, and that denies us the spawn point that's right next to Charlie, the, that group of spawn points. And so we start spawning in in the northeast, which isn't terrible, but it's still not the easiest place you want to be. You'd rather have someone in front of the point so that your teammates could keep spawning in behind you at Charlie while you were trying to defend it. And so we end up taking such a massive push to B that we end up losing Charlie and basically it's a foregone conclusion at this point unless we have someone tacked in over in the middle or at Charlie that we're going to lose it and now it's completely reversed they have Alpha and Charlie we have Bravo fortunately the shore said there control B said we have it with one at this point we just have to sit tight you know I got my tack ends which have been huge in this game and we're going to pull out a win 
And now this is a 5-on-5 five five game. There's another random on our team. He's not random. He's friends with guys on the other team. He's just been sitting tight in a corner for about a third of the game. But at the end, he realizes his friends are going to lose. And, you know, he goes for, instead of just throwing the game, he goes for the sabotage. But it's too little too late. We've got this one locked down. That this is what happens in a kind of competitive domination game in pubs without a respawn timer. It's all about the reinforcements, is all about the spawn points. And we're going to see some more of that in Black Ops 2, I imagine. That's just sort of why I've been trying to take a little closer look at domination. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it, hope you thought it was informative. Uh, these games are rough, but they are a ton of fun. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you later. Yeah! Ooh.